Last night was Bishop Jonathan, the Bishop of Southampton's leaving service as he goes off to be Dean of York Minster. It was a sad occasion as Bishop Jonathan has been a great source of affirmation and support to all the clergy in his area and myself included. One of his great strengths is to give people the sense that he really knows them, that he really understands where they're coming from and what makes them tick. It's very powerful and it's very supportive. To be known and to be understood by someone else is a vital part of what it means to be human and it helps us to flourish. That's why perhaps it's also such a vital part of our faith, our relational faith, that has at its heart the Trinity, the core relationship between God, Jesus and the Spirit. But knowing and being understood is also expressed through the narratives of our faith. The story of the wedding at Cana of Galilee is one of my most favourite of the Gospel stories, <laughs> predominantly for the intimacy of the interaction between the mother and son. I can picture the scene. I wonder if there were wry smiles, eye-rolling or sighs between the two of them, as without even skipping a beat, Mary follows <laughs> Jesus' apparent dismissal of her request by instructing the servants to do what Jesus said. They knew and understood each other. We are about to embark on the next round of bee mapping within our benefice. As I mentioned in the notices, this is the process by which we evaluate our work as parishes and as a benefice. And our work is how we bring God's love into the communities around us and make God known to them. We will be evaluating what we're doing, perhaps dropping a few things, perhaps thinking about starting new ones. And we would like everyone to take part in this bee mapping process. Everyone's contribution will help us to move forward. But the first part of that process will be knowing and understanding. Knowing and understanding each other as individuals and our respective parishes, <coughs> our faith, our strengths, our gifts. Knowing and understanding our communities. What are the gifts and strengths of Ampfield, of North Baddersley, of Chilworth? What are their needs? But most vitally, we must know and understand something of where and how God is already at work in these communities and how we can join in with that work. So how do we do all that exactly? Well, we pray. Prayer. That's a big word, isn't it? Prayer. So... I'm going to have a little think, we're all going to have a little think about what prayer is this morning and um, I'm going to ask you to turn to the people around you and just have a little conversation about what is prayer, what is prayer and perhaps how do you pray and what are your struggles and questions about prayer but first of all just talk to people about what is prayer. I know it's early in the morning and I know nobody really wants to talk to each other, but just bear with me for two minutes and give it a go. And there are, of course, as many ways of praying as there are human beings. There are no rights or wrongs when it comes to prayer. But prayer is fundamental. It's the oxygen of our faith. It's the fuel for the fire. Prayer is stillness of mind and soul. We need to be able to quiet the buzz of thoughts so that we connect with God and hear God. But being still, as we've, as we've discussed, can be a real challenge, trying to find that space, trying to still our minds to get to that point where we can connect with God can be a real challenge. And some people find short repetitive phrases 
um, quite useful to repeat, to allow them to still their mind, things like be still and know that I am God, or the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Some people may use Bible passages as a way of praying. Some people may use music or art or walking in nature. However we do it, the key thing is to keep doing it, to keep exploring. And I'd like to challenge you this week to think about the prayers, your prayers, how you're praying during the week. Perhaps do some research, learn a new method of praying, try doing it differently. Come and tell me what you found and maybe I can try it too. The intimacy demonstrated between Jesus and Mary in the story of the wedding at Cana is for me an illustration of prayer. The Jesuit priest and writer Anthony de Mello described prayer in this way. Behold God, beholding you and smiling. Prayer is gazing at God as God gazes back at us with love. There is a sense of being known, being understood and most importantly being loved. That is truly a precious gift. A gift that helps us, our parishes and our communities to flourish. Amen.